<laughs> Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist here in the Portland, Oregon area. I am joined by Janelle Woodleaf today, an empowered body worker. I'm saying that right? Correct? Say hello. Yeah, Just hi. Sure that <laughs> so glad to have you here. Nice to be here. On the show. Um, my first official guest. Ooh. Yeah. That's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, I hope it pans out okay for you. We'll see how I am in, as an interviewer. You can give me the the shakedown afterwards. Okay. <laughs> I accept all levels of honesty. Um, okay. So I think, um, I mean, I know you kind of from social media of all things. Mm -hmm. Social media, online, connecting people in the real world. Who would have ever thought? I know. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and I was really inspired when I saw a lot of the, th the things you posted and the way that you share, um, which is leading us to some of these specific topics that we're going to talk about, which we'll get to. But through the social media, I know you as a, a massage therapist, um, Thai massage specifically, an educator, a mom, a business owner. Mm -hmm. And I think a good way to start is to give a little bit of your background and how you came to be here and practicing massage yeah in this we're in your space right now and how you came to be here yeah cool um so my i guess my start of massage came across um as kind of accidental in a way um i was getting my phd um and i was working on my dissertation and was massively unhappy oh. and depressed and I, but I felt really stuck. Like I didn't know how to do anything different. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a, a tragic um, thing that led me to do something different. But my, the chairwoman of my dissertation committee passed away. Oh, wow. And I suddenly had the choice of either moving back to Boston and finding a new topic for my dissertation and losing an, a year and a half of work um, or accepting the fact that the universe was telling me something hmm. and to take that message. And I took the message that I needed to be doing something different. And it's so interesting that your, all that work you did passed away with her in a yeah, way. Yeah. 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 It did. Mm -hmm. hmm. But the universe gave you a new message. It gave me a new message. Yeah. yeah. And it, it told me that I really needed to listen to not just my heart, but my body. Yeah. Um, because my body was talking to me in some really profound ways that I wasn't listening to. What did that look like? Like anxiety? Um, panic? Se severe anxiety, yeah. um, headaches, mm. um, digestive issues, um, trouble sleeping. I mean, pretty much the whole yeah. gamut of, um, I guess disharmony hmm. and it was coming across in some pretty profound ways in my body. And when I kind of got hit in the head, the universe said, right. okay, you're really not listening here. So I've got to do something really extreme. Um, at the time, did you associate those that disharmony with being no on the wrong or is that just all retrospect? It's, it's largely retrospect. Yeah. Um, I mean, in the moment, I I just simply didn't want to move back to Boston. Mm. And I, because I had started a relationship and I was really happy, um, a relationship that eventually would have turned into a marriage, mm -hmm. or it definitely, it, it eventually did turn into a marriage. Yeah. Um, and I just knew I wasn't happy and knew I needed to do something different. And... Um, I wasn't quite sure what it was, but I sat down and I did a lot of soul searching and was thinking really hard about what what things were that were making me unhappy with what I was doing and kind of pieced together what I felt like was missing and and then took that whole picture and used it to explore what else I could be doing. And massage kind of popped up as um, as an option that mm -hmm. I was like, oh. I guess I could entertain that, but I don't know. Is that a real job? Like, it just seems so um, idyllic. Like, it yeah. just, it didn't seem really possible to me. Helping um, people, healing people. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. My, you know, I think being in a PhD program, I was very so focused on being analytical. Yeah. And it, 
it was a huge leap for me to step outside of that and do something that my mind actually had to quiet Mm -hmm. during. And anyway, so I was just curious and I went to a preview day um, at one of the massage schools and there was a Thai massage therapist Mm. who was doing a demo. Is that here in Portland? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Allie Lurie? No. No, no, no. Okay. No. Um, He's, he doesn't teach. He's just, yeah, he's just a practitioner. And um, so I had a few minutes of Thai massage and I'd never, I'd never had or even heard of a Thai massage before. And it was, I mean, a very profound moment in my life because it was very clear that that's what my body and my heart really wanted to be doing. So uh, that started my massage career. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. And yeah, yeah, it was. So you just kind of, yeah, that's, uh, I've, in the first episode of this show, I talk about my history with massage and how I feel sort of self conscious about yeah. not having a cool story. I just, it was interesting and I chose to do it. Like, mm-hmm. I was, I mean, it's probably not even true. Like, I always thought that everyone had like a really cool reason to be there and I didn't. So I never mm-hmm. talked about it. But yeah. That's, I, I hadn't even had that much body work at all before entering school. Okay. Yeah. I certainly had never had Thai. I've had Thai since, but. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's you. That's becoming a massage therapist. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then other things happened in between. Yeah. In between so, now, I should say. But to, to owning your own business. Yeah. So, well, um, I finished massage school and I studied in Thailand for a couple months. Um, and when I came back, I started my own practice. So I've always been an independent practitioner. Okay. Um, but I um, uh, started having babies. And frankly, um, I found family life really overwhelming and daunting mm-hmm. and really didn't have any energy to give to anyone else yeah. um, myself let alone right anyone else in the world so um, it really wasn't until I was um, very much uh, kind of forced out into the world mm-hmm. um, uh, by a, a pretty sudden divorce and mm. separation and when I was when I first went back to work I had a um, my practice was in um, a studio in my house and there was just something that was missing about it and so i started to look around for places where i might be able to bring um, my kids Mm. and have it be a little bit more of a balance between just being at home and just being at work right um and so i as i was kind of thinking about this i thought that i i'd like i didn't i didn't know of anything so i thought maybe i would create something and then through a connection, I heard about Vita. Mm-hmm. Um, and Vita, for those um, for people who don't know, it's a co-working space that was uh, designed um, and run by women. And it's all around making life work um, for the modern person, for the modern parent. Mm. And uh, so I found this space. And, you know, it was at that point in my life when I was open to receiving from the universe and because I was things kind of like fell into place and so literally within uh, a three-day span a Friday and then to a Monday I found Vita I found my apartment I found a new car and every single one of those they were the first ones that I looked at and instantly it was oh yeah okay I'm home wow and um so that's yeah that's kind of how I I got here that's a lot yeah <laughs> uh i love that though that's a great story i mean difficult the time story yeah has its own tragedies um i i think a good uh question to ask you just because of it's how i came to sort of follow you online and what i sort of knew you for as it were is this idea of self-care. Mm-hmm. And you've done, you've did this other great episode of the Abundology podcast. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Renee Spears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you are uh, very forthcoming about your, some of the story you just told in even mm-hmm. more detail. Mm-hmm. And I just was just blown away by the honesty and the vulnerability you, you're able to show on that episode and just in some of the posts that you've done. Um, so I, I believe in that episode, you refer to it as radical self-care. Mm-hmm. So self-care 
is a term everyone likes to throw around. Mm-hmm. It usually refers to like, are you going to the gym and are you eating the right things? And mm-hmm. it's Bubble become baths, sort of, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, nebulous. And mm-hmm. it sort of seems to mean everything. So it means nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess radical self-care, I like the idea of that, mm-hmm. the sound of it. Mm-hmm. How do you distinguish your feelings around self-care from what is become the cliche? Well, there's a difference between consumeristic Mm self-care, right? Like this idea that you have to spend money, um, that you have to do things, you know, kind of in air quotes, that you need to add more to your to-do list, that you need an overabundance, right? Like you need to add things. Yeah. And really when it comes down to it, self-care is simply caring for ourselves, our bodies, our hearts, our emotions, the way that we prioritize ourselves. The I like to think about it as not just adding things to your to-do list, but completely rearranging your to-do list so that you're at the top of your priority list, yeah. which is not something that comes very naturally to most of us, especially parents. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a very big tendency to prioritize everyone else around us yeah. before ourselves. And that puts us in kind of a state of constant stress, if not crisis, to the point where we're, it's almost like we're not even paying attention to ourselves until there is a crisis, right. until we get injured or until we have an illness or until we've just really lost our mind. Mm-hmm. And that's just not, it's not sustainable. No. And so I use the term radical self-care because it just, it stuck with me. It really wasn't intentional. Um, I, I came to a point in my life where I had not prioritized myself for a very long time. The notion of self-care, and which is why I'm so passionate about redefining what it is, um, it induced a lot of guilt in me as mm. a young mom um, with two little kids and an unhealthy marriage um, and a lot of demands on me. I... I was I I didn't even know who I was, mm. and I did not um, create the self care system that I needed to protect myself. And so, when something unexpected and kind of tragic happened, um, I was just, for lack of a better word, traumatized. Mm. Um, I so just a kind of a basic background. Um, my my husband. We've been married for about six years. Um, suddenly left me for another woman and I didn't see it coming Mm. and it just I mean to say it devastated me was I mean as a um, put to put it very lightly right um, I was like I felt like I was just plunged into this deep dark hole and it wasn't I didn't have the tools to love and care for myself um and I don't know that there's a song that I keep hearing because it just came out on the radio, but it goes something like I had to lose you to find me. Mm. I had to hate you to love me. And it feels so profound now because I hadn't developed these, these systems or this, what I call radical self care. So that when something really awful happened, I felt broken because I couldn't keep myself together. And so I had to um, learn to find my way out of this hole, which I eventually like, it wasn't like a a hole that was containing me. Like there was a way out, but I couldn't see it when I was stuck in it. Yeah. And it it was a slow process. Um, And um, I felt very, um, yeah, just very broken. Yeah. Um, I remember on the other show, you mentioned how it it started to feel less like a hole and more like a tunnel. Like a tunnel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the beacons along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember like very specifically thinking about, I had several people in my life who um, were kind of, you know, at times like kind of pulling me along, Mm -hmm. like, okay, you got to keep moving. And I remember at some point someone said the antidote to fear is action Mm. and Sometimes it doesn't even matter what that action is, just doing something, but not for the sake of like keeping busy. Right. Right. Because there's definitely like an element of distraction that can happen that we have a tendency to 
uh, not want to feel our feelings. And so we distract. And the other thing that I remember hearing was the only way past this is through it. And at some point I, I recognized that um, the pain that I was experiencing so much when this event happened was triggering pain that went way, 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 way back, like to my early childhood. Oh, wow. And that I, I knew at first it was just a sense, but I, I definitely became very concrete. I knew that if I didn't heal those really deep wounds, that this pain was going to keep coming back to me and keep coming yeah. back to me. And I was done. I, I didn't want to have to go through that again. Yeah. And so choosing to love myself was the, the way that I got myself out of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sounds so simple. <laughs> <laughs> it sure didn't feel simple at the time. Um, well, it's, yeah. That's s- for sure. But it is easy, right? It, it, yeah, yeah. It's the distinction between simple and easy. Yeah. Was, um, I should say that for, for my part, I, my self care has been poor lately. Yeah. <laughs> I went through, I, my, my own divorce, uh, and I have two small boys is, uh, recent and, um, still top of mind for me right now. Yeah. And toward the end of the year, I was spinning my wheels a little bit and, uh, not taking care of myself, just not drinking water, not sleeping the right way and not getting body work, not eating well, just all the things were just, yeah. yeah. And it, it it may be cliche, but I've sort of taken this new decade to, to reset. It's not cliche and, yeah. at all. I'm so excited about 2020. <laughs> um, but I would say thank you to you because you've been a, a beacon in my own tunnel so mm. far, um, which I really appreciate. I love yeah. that. Thank yeah. you. You're so well. It's true. I was like, what did you know post? I need, I need a boost today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I yeah. took, I actually took time off, yeah. which was huge. From... So- from from work oh from like christmas to just yesterday yeah oh wow yeah i mean i was still kind of engaging but i didn't uh i didn't post and that but that's part of taking care of yourself yep yeah Mm -hmm. yeah it's amazing so one of the other elements of why i think your presence in the community in line is remarkable is this level of authenticity and vulnerability Mm -hmm. and where does that, like my question is where does that come from? How did you cultivate that? Mm-hmm. I mean, I know firsthand how hard it is to stand in front of a camera or a microphone and and speak to your truth. All the thoughts that start spinning. Speaking for myself, mm-hmm. like how do I look? What are people going to say? Well, who am I to put this out there? All you know, just all the things. Mm-hmm. So, how do you do it? Where's the magic? <laughs> um. I love myself so fiercely yeah. that um, I celebrate being seen. And, That's a great way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it, you know, it's not a, um, I'm a very humble and in many ways very modest person. So it's really not like a look at me, look at me. Um, it's accepting that my journey has been really powerful And the more that I have begun to share it, the more I see the, how much it resonates with people. Yeah. Whether it's specifics, you know, someone who's gone through divorce or some other kind of grief or whatever it is, but the the universality of pain and the struggle of taking care of yourself, these very basic things resonate with almost everyone, especially with parents and um, with a lot of moms that I talk to, whether you go through something big and tragic or not, the messages of putting yourself first is, is huge. And, but I, I will say that it didn't, it didn't come totally naturally. I had um, a lot of work along the way. I've had coaches, I've Mm. had close friends, I've had just the general process of having to go really deep. Mm. Um, But I had um, one of my coaches had a really profound effect on me. And she kind of just got me unstuck. And I, she, she said some really profound things to me the first time I spoke to her. And it was, um, it really made me 
realize how afraid I was. Yeah. And we had this really intense conversation and, you know, she said, you know, if you were brave, you wouldn't have done X, Y, or Z. So what are you so afraid of? And I realized that I had been making all these decisions, even though really empowering decisions, they were still rooted in fear. Mm. And this fear was controlling me. And so it was a combination of that conversation. And then I had, I went to a, um, a, an event that night. So after this conversation with my coach and I randomly pulled a card, um, from a, a deck of uh, quotes that the speaker was passing out and having us having us select one, and it said, "Be brave." No, oh. when things and line up like that, it's insane. Yeah. yeah, it was so insane, and you know, it just it was like it just unstuck me, hmm. and I just started to celebrate myself. Like once I started to to realize that I didn't have to hold on to that fear anymore, um, I started to see the ease in what happens when you show up authentically in the world. Yeah. Like it just, things flow. And when you put yourself out there in an authentic way, what you need and what you crave attracts to you. Yeah. And it's, there's magic in that, <laughs> but it doesn't happen if you, if you hide. Yeah. Does it get easier to share? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because there's definitely an element of like positive feedback. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, like if you are, you know, sharing and sharing, but no one's like interacting with you or like yeah. you're just not getting that feedback. I feel a little feedback. bit of that like, like with my first, but I'm, I always just remind myself that I'm just s starting this journey and it might trying to create a community and build something and it takes so, time yeah mm -hmm. um yeah it takes time but i also um you know i am a, a lot of people um are a little surprised by this but um i'm actually incredibly introverted in the in the in the true way mm -hmm. in that you get energy from having time alone yes kind of way yeah um, and so it has been a real process to learn how to do things like, um, walk into a, a networking event where I know nobody. Oh yeah. Um, you know, in my past life, <laughs> I guess you could, you could say, um, that would have been kind of unheard of. Mm. It would have taken so much energy that I just wouldn't have felt comfortable yeah. at all. And, but once I started showing up authentically and just celebrating like the fact that I'm here and the fact that I'm doing these things, I, I can walk into a room and not know anybody and be perfectly comfortable. Yeah. And, but it took like lots of getting out and meeting people and, um, introducing myself as this new me and having it be received with such positive light, um, makes a huge difference amazing mm -hmm. <laughs> um self-care authenticity time massage i know you touched on this a little bit yeah um so my my question when i was making notes for this episode was why Thai massage were you ever drawn to any other styles or no nope. it's always been thai yep yeah yeah so, so i'm a i'm a small person and um the working on a massage table feels really uncomfortable okay. to my body. Yeah. Um, I really like to be able to move yeah. and I have a, um, a long background in yoga, uh, in dance and I just like to move. And so when I, when I discovered Thai massage in that, in that demo, um, I saw how the therapist was able to move his body and and then receiving it the way that my body felt to be moved like that yeah. um it it works really well for my body i like to say that it activates like every part of my brain as well as my body it's, everything's like working together mm -hmm. it's um, intuitive it's intellectual it's meditative it's there's the the movement aspect like i'm like in touch with my body i am in touch with my client's body there's just so much that is very holistic about it in the truest sense like 
holistic um, approach to being Mm -hmm. as well as moving and thinking about the world. Cool. I got to get more time massage. Uh-huh. <laughs> Everybody does, really. <laughs> it's amazing. And we, 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 we introduced you early on as empowered. Yes. How do you define that? What does that mean to you to call yourself an empowered body worker? Yeah. So I, you know, the way that I practice um, is really centered around empowering people to take care of their bodies um, through the body work that I do, but also through teaching self-care. So I um, do a lot about sharing with my own journey of developing really radical self-care. But I also just give my clients really simple tools um, to care for their bodies at home. Um, I don't believe that we should rely on anyone else to fix our bodies. Mm. And the the idea that you go to a massage therapist or any other kind of body worker or practitioner um, to get fixed. fixed, Um, one, it's just not sustainable. And two, it's disempowering. Right. Especially because there are going to be times when you can't get to a professional massage, whether there are financial or time or resources or whatever kind of constraints that you have going on in your life. Your self-care shouldn't fall apart simply because you can't go get a professional massage. Um, And not only that, but the benefits of professional massage only go so far if you're not doing things at home for yourself. How do you communicate to your clients about the ways that they can take care of themselves in a way that convinces them to take action? Let me Mm -hmm. explain. I haven't, I've been out of regular practice for a number of years while the boys were little, and Mm -hmm. now I'm getting back into it with my practice here. I would give people, when I first got out of school, I was like, oh, you got to do this stretch and mm-hmm. this exercise and this, and then I'd be like, they'd come back and they would do nothing. And mm-hmm. then I'd be like, okay, if you could do just these three things, this is really going to help you. Mm-hmm. They'd come back and they would do nothing. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, finally, I got to the point, I got so jaded so quickly. I was like, all right, I know you're not going to do this anyway, but if you could do this one thing, it would help you. Yeah. Yeah. So that, if there's a, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to, well, as I'll I, say as that. As I start to get clients in the door, I want to convince them to, Take, take that action, take yeah. that recommendation and, be, and believe me. Yeah. Maybe I communicated it poorly at the time as well. That's entirely possible. Well, I, I mean, I can relate because when I had my practice before, I was doing the same thing. Yeah. And was getting really disenheart- disheartened because you know, people weren't ready. You know, right? It's a, it's a readiness thing. Oh. Um, they're not ready to prioritize themselves. They're not ready to integrate those things that, I mean, we both know that they work. Right. You know, Um but they're just not quite at that point. There's not going to be any convincing that mm. will be really possible. Um, and so when I went back to having my practice this time around, um, it was really, it has to be a central component of how I present myself in the world. So people know what they're getting yeah. um, when they come to me. And so I attract two different types of clients and um you know one of them ideally will lead to the other but i have a a coaching program and so i work with people for a set amount of time either five or ten weeks and it's an investment that people make in changing their bodies this is body work plus conversation or is it um so it's all body work coaching Oh, okay. Yeah. And so it includes body work um, and then it includes all of those self-care pieces. Oh, cool. And so it's a matter of who am I attracting and whether or not they're ready. And so the clients who are in that program, um, they've invested in themselves. They have, you know, set the time aside. They have set the finances aside. Mm. They're ready to do all of those things. And I have a very like specific program that I work them through with a workbook and they get um, things to work on every week and we work on integrating them into their lives. Like it's very set. Um, the rest of my clients who just come in like for individual sessions, it's less um, structured. Um, I'll say, oh yeah, like this is a great thing because I can't not do that. Yeah, um, you still give them ideas, but mm-hmm. you don't try to add have, have extra weight to it or no. set any expectations around whether no. or not they do it. Or, yeah. No, um, I know that they that they work, and um, 
when they're ready, they will they will do them. But most likely, um, people are just who are just kind of coming in for a massage, you know, once a month or like you know maybe they only see me once or twice or um, it's like I'm planting seeds. Yeah. Like even if they're not going to grow right away, um, they they at least they they're getting those those messages and they know what I can do. And so when they're ready, they may or may not come back to me to actually get that guidance and to fully integrate that stuff. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, it's, I mean, I, I would say that it's a struggle that any health and wellness practitioner or physician yeah. like really encounters, like the people have to be ready for change mm -hmm. because it, making new habits, making new routines for self care, that all takes a lot of effort. Um, it's simple. Right. Um, but it's not always easy. Yeah. Right? Um, That's why my own recent journey has been sort of extra frustrating because I know all too well, like how much better I feel just in every way and mm -hmm. when I do the right things and I know what all the right things are. Yeah. And still, I mean, you can chalk it up to this stress and anxiety and the divorce and whatever you want, but I yeah. it's still like, Ugh, just do the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I had another question. Sorry, I'm hopping around a lot. Parenting and work-life balance. It mm -hmm. seems like this space, Vita, mm -hmm. if the listener has never been here and you're in the Portland area, it's remarkable. Mm -hmm. I got to hang out in the front for a little while. Um, I think it seems like this space lends itself well to figuring that out for you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, you know, we have uh, drop-in child care here. And so, um, if there are, are my, my son's off of school for, um, winter break right. and I'm able to work because he can be here. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. Phenomenal in that, in that aspect. Yeah. The work-life balance yeah. as a concept. Mm -hmm. So like people like to talk about it a lot. I don't think, I think a lot, there's a lot of spinning wheels going on around that topic and mm -hmm. just. How do you think of that in general? Is there, is that even a thing anymore? Or is it just our lives are so integrated with our work that? You know, to be honest, yeah. Nick, I feel like that's not even really a question I can like fairly answer. Yeah. Um, I am an entrepreneur. Right. You know, I get to set my life around my priorities. Yeah. Um, because I own my own business and because I have set my life up this way, um, I have more freedom to do that. Yeah. Our society is not set up for a work-life balance. Mm -hmm. You know, family work. Um, it's just, it's just not. Mm. And so, most people do not have that luxury. Mm. Um, I mean, that's a very uh, honest way to talk about that. Mm -hmm. I feel like no one approaches it and say the system is broken. They just say like, "Oh no, you got to do this and this and this, and then yeah. everything will be okay." Yeah. yeah, yeah. It doesn't. No, it doesn't work that way. I mean, yeah. we don't have family leave. Right. Um, let alone, you know, maternity leave. We don't have, um, there's not the, the, we don't prioritize children. We don't prioritize parenting. And so in the workplace, it's almost like most people don't get supportive bosses. You know, yeah. they don't get supportive employers who are understanding when there's a sick kid, mm. you're just expected to show up, you know, no excuses. Yeah. And that's, it's almost like it's acceptable in yeah. our culture to yeah. have that. And, you know, most families um, rely on two incomes and it's not optional. You know, there's lots of things that aren't optional. And I guess I would say that I had the luxury of completely having to reinvent my whole life um, at a time when I was also creating my business. Yeah. And so I, you know, was able to do um set things up in a way that allowed me to live my priorities in a way that other families just don't easily have access to. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I'm going to keep thinking about that topic. <laughs> um, uh, how do you think about practice building? Go back to, this is top of mind for me right now. Yeah. As I'm starting, I've, I've done a lot of work around the brand, as it were, of Massage Hodgepodge and creating mm -hmm. that and setting up and the systems and all the things. It's not 
really let any clients in the door as such. So that's something I'm really working on right now, getting out in the community more. But I would love to hear how you think about practice building and yeah. client outreach and that kind of thing. So I have been building my brand for about a year. And it has um, been a slow journey. Um it's slow. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a long time. Yeah. Um, I, things didn't like fully start taking off for me. Oh no, I won't even say fully taking off. <laughs> um, when I moved in here in July, yeah. then it was like, okay, now I had all of a sudden had this, this more, um, room to fill with, yes. with my business. Um, just not being in a space, you know, attached to my house made a huge difference. Um, but in the beginning, and still now to some extent, but it definitely in the beginning, I didn't feel like I knew what I was doing. And so, so it's I, not just me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, good. No, it's hard. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so I kind of developed this practice of following what felt aligned. And so when I felt really lost around like, marketing like all of the marketing decisions and all of this and all of the that um i had a coach say to me like well if you didn't have any of those things what would you be doing and i said well i would just be going out talking to people yeah and she was like okay that's what you need to do and so um i just i pretty much got involved in every single women's marketing group that i possibly could yeah. i just started just getting out there yeah like meeting anyone i could talking about myself talking about my business talking about my practice talking about my branding and um, being open to those conversations and also being open to investing in myself i was fortunate to have a little bit of savings and so i was able to um like pull in the the help that i needed when i couldn't see through the muck myself yeah and those things made a huge difference. And, but then it was also just really authentically showing up and, and being clear on who the kinds of clients that I want to attract. Yeah. Because that is really, once you know who you want to attract, then you can start speaking like, to them. Speaking to them. I've been struggling with this. This is really like current for me right now. Yeah. Yeah. Been doing a lot of work the past few days, like trying to define that. And, mm -hmm. and write about it and speak to it more yeah, yeah. it's been helpful because when you start you're just like i can help everybody that yeah. i don't have to help a specific yeah but then yeah. if you that's just like if you're helping everybody you're helping nobody and nobody understands what you do and yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and the thing is people want someone who specializes in them yeah right yeah and you know i have my niche but it's not like like i don't turn people away um, but it's a matter of how we talk about ourselves, um, in a way that attracts the, um, uh, so the people who are ready to do those self-care things, Yeah. right? Like that's who, that's who I resonate the most with the people who are wanting to do them or at least open to hearing them, um, and, or like ready to actually integrate them. Because I felt like before when I had my practice, I was doing a lot of like, oh, you should do this, you should do that. And then no one was <laughs> really doing them and it felt discouraging. Yeah. And so it it really, it makes a huge difference when you're crystal clear on who you are and how you want to practice. And those people come to you. Yeah. As long as you're getting out there in yeah. like the right ways. Yeah. Um, and, and that takes a lot of work. Yeah. And it takes time. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Yeah, I've been kind of in this weird spot where I'm like, maybe I should go get a job somewhere, but then how am I going to have time to get out there? And like, I'm trying to balance all those ideas right now. Yeah. Like, not sure where I'm going to land on that, but yeah, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Meanwhile, I decided to simultaneously produce all these videos in this podcast and but see, that's, just making it like, extra. <laughs> you're, but you're following what feels aligned. Yeah. Right? Like, you're not really sure what you're doing. You're not really sure like where exactly it's going, but it feels good. And yeah, like, it, it does. feels like part of your journey. And that is showing up authentically yeah. and you don't, may not know what it's going to look like eventually, like where exactly it's yeah. going, 
but you are you're in the process yeah. you're doing it oh thank you for saying that <laughs> <laughs> Um, and thank you so much for being on the show today. You're welcome. Um, before I let you go, I have an important question to ask you. Okay. Well, I can answer it first, though. It okay. only seems fair since it's actually your question. Oh. How are you going to change the world in 2020? <laughs> Should I answer first? Sure. Uh, so my answer uh, to this is a post you put on Instagram. Okay. I don't. I didn't. Didn't look to see if many people answered. I forgot to look. I was just like, I'm going to ask her that question. Um, I am going to continue to build Massage Hodgepodge and bring uh, conversations like this to the community and build a community and uh, produce long form video that shows off uh, massage therapy of all different styles. I'm hoping that you'll do a session with somebody so people can see exactly what you do from start to end and what that looks and feels and sounds like. And I think that 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 creating that content as it were can inspire people who don't regularly get body work to get more body work Mm -hmm. it can elevate the uh, profession of body workers in general i think people can just watch something like that and benefit therapeutically so i'm hoping the more i work on massage hodgepodge it can make a little the world a little bit better i think it will 2020 Mm -hmm. How are you going to change the world? Mm. <laughs> I have no idea. How much time do you have? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I am starting a self-care revolution. That's no small thing. No. Yeah. Um, I am in the process of creating a brand and um, a movement um, to put a self-care coach in everyone's pocket. Nice. Mm-hmm. I could use that. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so I have um, a project underway to create a self-care app. Cool. Um, I'm also um, uh, developing my own training program for massage therapists. And so... Around empowered body work or specific to Thai? Um, Well, it is is all a package. Okay. Um, So the way that I practice... I'll be teaching other massage therapists okay. to practice. So I have a couple starting this um, this winter, and that will eventually get put together in a more formalized mm. training program where people get certified. Cool. Um, and that should roll out towards the the end of the third quarter. That's my goal. Okay. Business talk. Third quarter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love yeah. it. Yeah. That sounds like it's going to change the world a lot. Absolutely. Wow. I can't wait to see that <laughs> third quarter. Okay, so where can people find you? How should they connect with you? Yeah, well, I I have to say my favorite platform is Instagram. Yeah, it's um, fun. I am on TikTok yeah. now too. If you haven't tried it, I have not. It's pretty ridiculous. Okay, yeah, check it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm on Instagram. Yeah. Um, it's my first name, period, last name. Um, so it's J E N E L L E. Okay. Period. W O O D. L I E F. Okay. F as we'll in link to freedom. all this too. That's yeah, F as in freedom. <laughs> um, and my, I have a website, JanelleWoodleaf.com. Okay. Um, I'm on Facebook. Um, my handle there is Woodleaf Power. Okay. And yeah, and then I've got all sorts of contact info. Um, but Facebook, Instagram um, are the easiest ways. Awesome. Yeah. I would encourage anyone to come seek out Thai Empowered body work here with you to check out the Vita space yeah see what you do yeah awesome i'm here most days of the week so cool all right well thank you everyone for listening and we'll see you next time thank Thanks. you